So there I was. I was driving to the uh, Eucharist at t for the 12 noon Eucharist about mm, three months ago, four months ago. I was passing through Wurzbach intersection at Bandera. And as far as I can tell, uh, I was just driving down the road and somebody hit me from the side. My two dogs were in the back of the car and they flew around, but they were fine. And I got spun around a little bit, got out of the car, and it was a big mess. And uh, the day after that went much better <laughs> because I called my insurance company, USAA. They called the tow truck right away. Uh, they got a hold of the Service King, the repair shop, just two blocks away from uh, Wurzbach and Bandera, just across the 410. And my car got stuck, put in the shop really quick. And uh, Rich Skyberg gave me a ride. I, I called up the church, said, I won't be doing the Eucharist today, but uh, help me get my dogs back to the house and we'll be fine. So it was kind of a bump in the road, so to speak. <laughs> Any case, uh, I was going to go pick my car up and they, they were really good about calling back and forth about how the progress of the repairs are going. Unfortunately, over about the next six weeks, I got a lot of calls <laughs> about how things were going or how things were not going. This is from uh, Service King. They're right in there, uh, Cha Cha is the restaurant down that way. In any case, um, they had a, made a little boo boo, and they, uh, when they're rehooking the battery back up, they uh, uh, burned up the circuit breakers. Or not breakers, but the fuse box. And so they had to go get a new fuse, a bunch of new fuse centers, fuses, and put the battery back in. So it took a little more time. And then I got, I got another call saying, we got the bumper that we needed, but we got it all on there, and then we forgot to paint it. So then, okay, then they painted it. Then I got another call saying, well, we painted the car, and it's all ready to go, but there was a problem in the paint shop, and the paint started bubbling. Because we, uh, we had to go buy a substitute uh, spray machine because ours broke down, and the substitute machine but didn't work too good. I said, okay, well, I'll see you in a little bit. <laughs> and then uh, I got another call and they said, I'm really sorry, but it happened again. The paint did not go on the way we wanted it to, and so we had to repaint your car for a third time. And I was getting kind of tired of the phone calls. But they were very good about calling, saying, here's the status of your car. And it took a long time. And finally, uh, it was towards the end when I was getting the car out of the shop. <laughs> and I, I went, oh, you're going to hate me for this, but I went in with my collar on pretty much intentionally. <laughs> <laughs> I said, we need to have a conversation. I need my car back. And we had the fuse box thing, and then we had the bumper thing, and then we had the, the paint thing, and then we had the other paint thing. And um, I need I need to get this done. And it didn't take that long. We we got the car back. Everything's been fine from there on. So I know from a first-hand experience that Service King is a place of pretty high integrity. To be honest, they could have just given me the car back with a bad paint job. But every time they they found the problem or by accident a problem happened, or by someone's oversight or machine breakdown, every time they said, here's something happened and we'll fix it for you, and they did. And I got the car back, and it took longer than I thought, but um, they were very honest about the whole thing. And you wonder the really good news of the story in the end? USAA, uh, uh, give me all the money back because they thought the other guy might be at fault and I didn't pay any deductible. So thanks for USAA. Just a little plug here, because they were so good to me, USAA, the insurance company, I quit my bank account at Wells Fargo and gave it to USAA. Yeah. Said, you guys were really good to me, I'll do whatever I can for you. But I know by experience, 
how the car, that particular car place works, and I know by experience how USAA works. I can speak with pretty good authority, personal authority. I don't know the whole history of either company. I can just tell you what I know. And for me, that, that is the, the best way to speak about something is from your experience of it. And so, when in the Bible today, Philip, who we don't know much about, goes, goes to Nathaniel and says, Nathaniel, we have found the one uh, who is spoken of by Moses and also the prophets. Uh, we have met him and we want you to come with us and we decided to follow him. Nathaniel says, can anything good come from Nazareth? And of course Philip says, well, you come and see. We have seen, now we invite you, come and see. We have experience with this. All we can tell you is our experience. Why don't you come and have the same experience if you just come and see what we have found for ourselves? Because we have found something very important. We have found this one who is fulfillment of the law and the prophets. For me, that's always the best way to speak about um, our experience with God and our religious life. It's really not a great idea to talk about our faith in terms of our propositions or our theories or our ideas about God or Jesus or the church or anything. Always much better to speak from the very center of who you are by what experience you have. What you know by first hand um, first hand knowledge. Which makes talking about God a pretty short, <laughs> could be a pretty short conversation. Because you and I, we've been at church for a million years, we've been to a lot of classes, and we've taken all kinds of Sunday school things, we've been to seminars, heard endless sermons, and yet those may not be what you know from your first hand knowledge. Other people have told you in a sermon or told you in a class or you read it in a book or you heard it in the creed or you saw it in the liturgy but what do you know? What's been your experience? That's always the place to start from when you want to talk about and share something about God or Christianity or religion in general. It does say today in our prayers the very first prayer we pray of the day because we're in the season of Epiphany that you and I will be enlightened or illumined by participating and taking the sacraments and also by hearing the word. The word from the Bible and I guess the word from me or any other, any other place you'll hear from the word of God. But you will be enlightened, you will have knowledge, you will be illumined by the word and sacraments. So from that experience, that's where you can really speak from. When it comes to evangelism or, or religious talk or bringing people to Christ, always speak from what you know and not from what you've heard. I try to do sermons that way. I try not to speak too theoretically about what someone told me or what I read in a book, but something more about what I can tell you from experience. Always much safer ground to work from. It's exactly how Philip did with Nathaniel. He says, we have found. I have seen. I have talked to this person. I can tell you that he is the one we've been looking for. And then Nathaniel says, well, I'm not so sure. He says, well, you come and see. Nathaniel meets Jesus. And Nathaniel says, mm, how have you, when did you get to know me? And Jesus says, well, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. So now Nathaniel can say with pretty good authority, hmm, this person really is remarkable. This one is incredible. He is the king of Israel. You are the son of God. Because he has had some personal experience with this Jesus person already. He came, he saw. You know, it's always the worst thing in the world. You know, when it comes to religion or speaking about Christ or talking about Christianity or speaking about church, when we ever have to get defensive and argue, 
and try to prove ourselves. I never wanted to try to prove anything about God or argue with anyone about God or try to defend a point of view. Mostly I just want to speak from my experience and say, well, you can come and see. I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> I'm not defending any proposition or idea or theory. You come and see. We're not fighting here. Just come and see and see what your experience would be like. So, when you're, as you all, as good disciples of Christ and Episcopalians, as you are illumined and enlightened by the sacraments and by the word, you will shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, as the prayer says. And as you shine and you're in contact with the people around you, your family, your friends, your neighbors, anybody else, you never have to prove anything. You don't have to prove the Bible or defend the creed or argue about the church. You just say what your experience is, which is so easy to do. I can tell you by experience how the people at Service King uh, treated me and how my car got fixed. I can tell you by experience what it is to work with USAA. I don't have to argue about it or prove it or defend it. I just say, here's what happened. Why don't you come and see? You can come and see. It takes all the pressure out of evangelism. All the pressure out of witnessing. All the pressure out of converting someone. All the pressure out of making someone no, try to get them to see your point of view. You don't have to do any of that. In fact, it would be wrong and it would be goofy if you tried. All you have to do is say, here's my experience. Uh, you could come and see. See what you think. See what your experience is. So, if you want to go to Service King, go ahead, but be ready for a few phone calls. <laughs> If you can join USAA, give it a shot. You'll probably have a good experience. And if you want to come to the Episcopal Church and, and see what it's like uh, to follow Christ in this tradition, come and see. It's really quite nice. You can tell your friends that because that's your experience. You can tell anybody that. And you don't have to worry about how they respond or how they react. or You don't have to be defending or arguing or anything. You say... Oh, come and see. Philip did that with Nathaniel. Nathaniel did that after he met Jesus. You and I can do that with the people we know as well. Just tell people, here's my experience. You come and see. So I offer this to you in God's name. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.